Tip number one is by far the best tip and will make Notion on your phone so much more usable. And it's setting up the Notion widgets to quickly access a page or a database so you don't have to open up the Notion app. And I dedicate a full home screen on my iPhone for Notion. So here I have my personal notes database, my personal knowledge management database, and I also have the widgets for recent notes as well as favorites, which corresponds to your favorite bar on the desktop. So here I'll click into my weekly reflection journal and this is what's called a deep link. You can see it's redirecting Notion to this specific link. Quickly getting into my journal is essential and the widget makes it so much easier. As you can see, because I went into that page, it now appears in my recents widget. This is great when you're working on your desktop and you wanna pick up right where you left off on your iPhone. Now I'm going to click on my in progress page, which is really a page where I have multiple favorite links for my content creation. And I do this so I don't muddy up my favorites bar. This is another kind of fun trick you can do to have multiple favorite links that you can quickly get to with two clicks. So let me show you how easy this is to set up. You go to another page here, you hold on your home screen, everything starts jiggling and you press that plus button. And then we have our widgets. We're gonna type in Notion here and we're gonna have our different options. So uh, a page of favorites, a bigger page of favorites. We'll have recents and then the bigger page of recents. So again, I use all of these. We'll go ahead and click on this page here. And if you do have a cover picture for your page, it will appear on the home screen. So it look much nicer when you have that cover set up. So we'll click on page and click the choose button. And then we have our options here, but we can obviously search for a specific page or database. Highly recommend you do this if you have not set up Notion widgets. Moving on to tip number two, which is setting up a mobile view. So you can see here, I have something labeled mobile view. Notion doesn't have something like this by default, but the next best thing is setting it up as a gallery view for your mobile experience. So you can see here, if I go into edit view, you can see I have this set up as a gallery view with page content. The reason I do that is because it's much nicer in terms of a, a touch experience on your phone. I also have it set up where I can see a quick preview of what's inside the note. So this note here, I'm kind of tracking my favorite music of the year. So I can see which albums I've kind of already noted down that are my favorites. So as I go down, I can see kind of previews of each and every note. So if you're going to use Notion on a mobile device, especially databases, make sure you're using gallery view or at least list view. You don't want to use something like table view where it's just going to be a kind of a, a small experience where clicking into these notes is a little bit harder. I have average size fingers and this is not the experience you want on a mobile device. And the nice thing about Notion is, and it's kind of a small but brilliant feature, is I have it set up as a mobile view and Notion remembers what device you use that specific view for, so it'll remember it. So here's a quick look at my personal notes on my desktop. And you could see, even though it's on mobile view on my iPhone, it's the default view on my desktop, which is really, really nice. Definitely make sure you have a mobile view set up. And to do this is just to go into whatever view. So we'll go back to this edit here. I can change this into a list view. So that's how a list view works. But I think if you are also going to make changes, I like to see other properties. So for me, I really love seeing my tags for my notes. So you could see once I set up the tags, I could see what topic area these notes are in. My favorite is the gallery view. So we'll go back to layout, we'll go into gallery view, and you can customize this as well. I, I, I like to have it a page content, but you can put none if you want, if you just wanna see the, the name of the note and not see the preview. But definitely make sure when you're setting up your databases on your mobile device that you always have some sort of mobile view, and I like to label it mobile view, and I always have it default to that specific view. So when I get on my iPhone, I know exactly it's gonna be a great experience versus you know a table view, which is nice on a desktop, but not the best experience on an iPhone. Tip number three is pseudo mm. offline mode. No, Notion doesn't have a true offline mode, unfortunately, but it does cache pages. So here I'm in my personal notes database, and I'm gonna go ahead and turn off Wi-Fi and put on airplane mode. Okay, I'm offline and I'm gonna go ahead and start clicking on some notes and seeing if they actually work. And you can see second bedroom, the note here is available. And I'll go to another note. 
Let's go click on the master bedroom. You can see that also is working. I'll click on this one with the, that has a database within it. There you go. And you can see that actually there isn't a partial offline mode, if you want to call it that, that actually caches pages. And you can also create new notes. So if I click here on new, I'll create a new note here and we'll call it offline note. And this will actually sync once I get back online. So you do have the ability if you're on a plane or just in an area where there is no internet, you can create new notes and it will sync back. So no need to worry about losing notes when you're offline. Tip number four is simple but very useful since mobile devices don't have that extra real estate. So your two column layouts on a large screen will end up being just a long page that you have to scroll down. So here we are back in my reflection journal where I use simple bullet points and these are the highs and lows of the week. And what I do is I have a default table of contents that I nest inside a toggle that's always open for this device. This allows me to quickly click on the lows of the week and brings me down to the bottom. And I can press the name to go right back to the top, which is really handy, so I don't need to scroll all the way to the top. So this allows me to easily go to the bottom and to the top in a very easy manner. Credit to Thomas Frank for showing me this cool hack. Tip number five is using your iOS devices share sheet to save things into Notion, like photos and articles and really anything that you find on the web can be saved on the mobile device. So you could see here I have my fried chicken sandwich that I've taken a picture of and I'm gonna save it into Notion here. So I go into the share sheet and I click on Notion and I'm gonna name this fried chicken sandwich and I'm going to save it into my personal notes database and then I'll save that. And then I'm gonna go into my Notion personal notes database. And you can see that it showed up. So I have my fried chicken sandwich. Next up, I'm going to save an article from the internet. So I have this article from Farnham Street. So we'll click on the share sheet again and we'll click on Notion and it automatically saves the title and we're gonna switch it to our personal knowledge management database and then click on the save button. And now it's saved this entire article. So we'll go back into our personal knowledge management We'll click on the article and here is the article. It saved the title, like I mentioned, and it also saved the link and then it has saved the entire article as well. So I'll scroll down and see the entire article. That's it for me guys. Catch you on the next one. And if you're interested in creating your own personal knowledge management system in Notion, click on this link.